This is Bosch RA1181 rotor table I bought about a year ago. This one has an aluminum tabletop, aluminum rotor plate, aluminum fans with T-track and two feather boards, and the integrated power switch box. Considering the price, this is a pretty good router table. However, it did have three issues. The first issue is the height of the table. This is too low to put on the ground and too high to put on my workbench. The second issue is dust collection. It only has a one dust port at the fence, which is not effective enough. The third issue is storage. There is no single place of storage available for this table. So I decided to upgrade this router table. This is the upgraded version. The overall height is at comfortable 36 inches now. I built a router box with a soft closed door, which can be opened to 155 degrees. There are wood strip stops at all four sides of the door opening to improve the air tightness when the door is closed. The fence dust port is connected to this router box with a 2.5 inches hose. And there is a 4 inch dust port to connect to my dust collector. This router box can substantially improve the effectiveness of dust collection. At each side of the router box, I build a soft close pull-out organizer with adjustable shelves. These organizers will be used to place router beads and wrenches. I use the bloom undermount drawer slides to build these two pull-out organizers. At the bottom of the router table, I built two large soft close drawers. These two drawers used blind dovetail joints and bloom undermount slides. I have a dedicated video for the build of these drawers. Link can be found at the upper right corner. Now let's start a build. To connect the new plywood body to the existing aluminum tabletop, plywood tabletop has a hole in the middle for the router plate and a recessed pocket at the back side. As the bottom of the aluminum table is a bit higher in this area than in other areas. This is the power switch box of the Bausch router table. The switch and reset button protrude from the bottom and there are two receptacles at the back side of the box. I want the plywood holder to walk around this switch box to improve the air tightness of the router box. The holder is made of three plywood parts. By gluing these three parts together, the holder can warp the switch box pretty tightly. I used my Shipoko Pro CNC to cut some plywood panels for this purpose. These panels can also be cut with table saw and router, just may need a little bit more time. For the other boards of the router table body, I roughly cut them with circular saw and table saw, and then did the final cut on table saw. I cut the boards with the same dimension in one batch to make sure they are equal with each other. To assemble the router table, I first glued and screwed the two side boards to the back board. I pre-drilled the countersink holes on side boards of the camera, and then used the clamp to hold them in place and screw them together.
Then I temporarily placed the middle shelf in between the two sideboards to make sure the sideboards are parallel with each other. Then I placed the top board in place and used the pin nail at the four corners to hold it. Then screw the top board to sideboard and backboard. I did not use glue here, just in case I may replace the router tabletop in future. To assemble the router box, I glue the switch box holder to the two sideboards of the router box. After the glue dried, I placed router table body to upside down position and screw the two sideboards of the router box to the body with pocket hole screws. Then also with pocket hole screws, I install the middle shelf. The last step of this body assembly is to glue and screw the two bottom boards. I apply the glue off the camera, use the clamps to hold them in place, and then fasten them with pocket hole screws. The casters were installed with washer and 3 quarter inch screws. After the body was made, I installed the power switch box tabletop and adapters at the back side of the table. Power switch box was installed with the original bolt and nuts. I just drilled two holes at the box holder because the original bolts are not long enough. So I drilled two large recessed holes. Tabletop was installed also with the uh, original bolts and nuts. I just mark the hole location, drill the holes, and fasten the bolts and nuts. The only tricky one is the hole close to the backboard. Because it's too close to the backboard, I use the drill to remove some material from the backboard to make some space for the nut. All the adapters were 3D printed, including a 2.5 inches dust port, to connect to the original fan port, a 4 inches dust port to connect to my dust collector, and two power cable adapters to seal the power cable hole for better air tightness for the router box. The two dust ports were screwed to the backboard. For the power cable adapters, I just used cork to hold them in place. Before installing the router box door, I need to install the wood strip stops first. I applied glue, used a scrap 3 quarter inch plywood as spacer to make sure the door would be flush with the frame. Then I used a pin nail to hold the door stop in place. Then I corked the inside seams of the router box as much as I can to further improve the air tightness. To install the router box door, I used the quick jig to drill holes and then hand screw the hinges on. Because of the door stops, I used the face rim adapter plates, which were screwed on to the door stop. Then I just clip on the door. That's it. Very easy installation of the Bloom 155 degrees of the close hinges. For each pull-out organizer, I used the three 15 inches Bloom soft close runners, two at the bottom and one at the top. Because the organizer is very narrow, so I used special Bloom locking devices for narrow drawers. The standard locking device can only be used on drawer with minimal inside width of 4 and 7 8 inches. This narrow locking device can be used on a drawer with, with minimal inside width of 3 and 3 quarter inches. 
This is the design of this pool organizer. It has a front panel made with 3 quarter inch plywood, which is required by the narrow locking device, a back panel and four rails made with half inch plywood, and top and bottom panels made with quarter inch plywood. The back panel has three notches, which are required by Bloom Runners. The front and back panels were cut on my Shapeoko Pro CNC. For sure, these boards can be cut without CNC, but I don't have a shelving jig to drill the holes for the adjustable shelves, so using CNC is a more convenient choice for me. Other parts of the organizer were cut on table saw and miter saw. Assembly is uh, quite straightforward, just apply glue, use clamps to hold them in place, and then apply more clamps in all three dimensions. After glue dried, I drilled three holes on the back panel. These are required by Bloom Runners. Then screw the locking device to the front panel. These locking devices are plastic, so be aware not to over tighten them. To install the Bloom Runners, the only tricky measurement is the setback. Did a little bit calculation based on Bloom's menu, then just screw the runner to the frame. After that, I just pull out the runners, place the organizer on, and push it in. That's it. The soft close pull out organizer. For the two bottom drawers, I used blind dovetail joints and the Bloom soft close undermount slides. I made a separate video about it. Please check out the link at the upper right corner. That's it, an upgraded rotor table based on Bosch RA1181 with mobile base, comfortable height, way better dust collection, much more storage and old soft close bloom hardwares. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please thumb up and subscribe.